Welcome to City Life Church Online. Here at City Life, we want to make Jesus easy to find in the 757. And Church Online makes him easy to find right where you are. No, we're not in a building together, but the Holy Spirit isn't limited by four walls, by geography or technology. So no matter where you are in life and no matter where you're logged in, we know that God loves you. He is pursuing you and he wants to know you and be known by you. And that can start right now with our worship. So let's put aside distractions, shift our focus onto worshiping Jesus. Come join us. City Life, we invite you to stand to your feet as we enter into worship. It's so good to see you in the sanctuary tonight. Come on, God is so good. God is so good and he is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our worship. Come on, there is joy in his house. Come on, who's joyful in this place tonight? Who is joyful in this place tonight? Who has a song in their spirit that they want to release tonight? Come on. Lord, we thank you that there is joy in your house. There is peace in your house. There is gladness in your house, Lord. And so tonight, God, we give you our praise. We give you our worship, Lord. We say we want to come alive in the river of God. We want to come alive in the river of God. And Lord, we ask that you would come and inhabit our praise tonight. Lord, that you would be pleased, God, with all that we bring, all of ourselves. We ask that you would come and have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, City Life. Let's come alive in the river of God. Here we go.
Hey church, you can go ahead and make your way back to your seat. We are so excited to have you with us tonight. I apologize if my voice is a little raspy. Uh, we took the youth group to a concert last night. It was so fun. Um, didn't get back until 3 a.m., so I'm still recovering a little bit, but it was a blast. But shameless plug for RC. Hey, if you have a middle or high school student uh, who is not out there on Wednesday nights, not only will Jesus impact them, but we do some really fun stuff. So we would love to have them out. 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Shameless plug over, back to the regularly scheduled program. So welcome. Uh, we're happy to have you, whether you're with us in person, whether you are joining us on our online community. This is a great place to be on a Saturday. Um, for those of you that are checking us out, maybe you're watching us for the first time online, maybe you are a couple weeks into checking out City Life in person, uh, we have a few things that we want to put on your radar. The first thing is if you have your phone, you can pull it out and you can text the keyword guest to the number on the screen behind me um, and that'll start a conversation between us and you. It's even easier if you're online, there's a big connect button, you don't even need to pull out your phone. Um, and then number two, we have a gift bag that we want to give you. Unfortunately, 
It is only for the people in person. Uh, but if you want one, I will drive to your house and give you a blue city life bag. Um, but if you didn't grab one on your way in, make sure you get one of those on your way out. And then thirdly, um, we have a new thing. It's kind of a new thing. We kind of did a revamp on it, but we're calling it Third Saturday Connect. Hey, if you were here last month, can you raise your hand? Let's make some noise. It was so fun. It was a blast. Um, Third Saturdays have always been a time that we take to connect with people who are newer to our church. Um, but recently, again, we revamped it. So instead of it being down in the cafe just for new people, it's an open invitation to our whole congregation. It's really fun. It's out uh, behind the sanctuary. We have music, we have drinks, we have snacks. Um, and again, it's for everybody. So that's happening next week after our service. So make sure you uh, put some time on your calendar to spend a couple minutes with us um, and connect with people that you wouldn't really connect in your normal Saturday routine. So we are excited to see you there. Hey, every single month, uh, we take time out of our service to honor someone who is going above and beyond in the ministry that they serve in. Um, so let's make some noise. Let's get rowdy for Josh Nielsen. Come on. Josh is actually up in the booth tonight working. It's just a testament to who he is. Josh, we just want to say thank you, man, for everything that you bring to the team, uh, not only to our tech team, but to our church community and our family. Um, you are uh, you work with excellence, dude, and it's awesome. We see it every week, and we don't see it because he works with excellence, right? The reason it's so seamless and we don't even think about people up there is because they do their job well. Um, so, Josh, we just want to say we love you, man. We're grateful to have you. Let's make it up one more time for for Josh. So good. Um, and hey, if you, don't, if you don't have a team here that you serve on at City Life, the tech team is a great place to do that. Um, it is a really cool way if you're good with computers, audio visual, if you have an eye for that thing, um, it's a great way to get plugged in. So find myself, Pastor Fred, Pastor Vanessa, a person in a blue shirt. We would love to have a conversation with you. Um, but yeah, thank you, Josh. One more time. Let's give it up for Josh. You're killing it, dude. Hey, lastly, um, we take a moment out of our church every week to just say thank you for, for your giving, church. We know that in order to be faithful with your finances, it takes sacrifice, um, and we want to recognize that, and we want to say, say thank you. So you can scan the QR code on the screen. You can drop off a physical gift. Um, and one of the things related to giving that we've been doing this year is our legacy offering, um, and it's been all of the money that's been given to that has been going to the facility and different projects, the new projector, the new AC in this room. Um, and you might have seen it, but the new paint that is down there at the entrance to the cafe, it looks so good. Shout out Madeline and Pastor Vanessa for putting in the work. Um, but it's been so cool to see um, the immediate practical implications of giving to that giving to that fund, right? It's so cool to see that. And the even cooler part is we don't just get to enjoy that as our church, but there's three other churches that meet here every single weekend. There's a preschool that's here during the week. We have youth group on Wednesday nights. There's other places that are ministries that use office space here. Um, it's making an impact for a lot of different people. Um, and so it's a really cool thing to be a part of. So um, yeah, we just wanted to make you aware of that and invite you uh, to join with us in that. So that's all I got for tonight. Um, I'm excited for what is in store for the rest of service. And I hope that you are too. Our dream is that there will be no other place on the planet where Jesus is easier to find than the 757. So if you are in person or watching online and feel far from God, our prayer is that you find Jesus here tonight. Be sure to check out our events promo page on our website for all that is happening in the life of our church. Hey church, Oktoberfest 2024 is happening and we would love for you to join us. It'll be on Saturday evening, October 26th, immediately following our service. We're gonna have a potluck meal together, followed by a walk through truck or treat for all of the kiddos. Hello? Hello? Flo, is that you? Hey, Pastor Vanessa, I just heard about the Oktoberfest event at City Life. Can I bring some of my progressive friends like Jamie and Rodney? Absolutely, your whole progressive squad is welcome. Yeah, you can even bring Alan. We would love to introduce them to our City Life Church family. That would be great. They really do need a church family. Ooh, such a great opportunity to connect them. Is there anything that we can bring? Thanks for offering. Actually, everyone who comes is invited to bring a side dish to share, and City Life is going to provide the rest. 
Oh, yum. We love to eat. Great. We'll do that. You guys should also consider hosting a trunk for our truck or treat. It's happening after the dinner that same night. It can be anything fun. Yeah, anything kids will enjoy. Make them laugh. Give them candy. You know how kids and free candy are. Yeah, and you guys could even dress up for our costume contest. It's going to be a blast. That sounds like so much fun. But my, oh my, who will I dress up as? I don't know, Pastor Vanessa. Who are you going to dress up as? Oh, um, I guess you'll have to wait and see what I dress up as. But I hope you and your friends can make it. Okay, yeah, Oktoberfest 2024. I'll see you there. Don't forget to sign up for your trunk, okay? All right, see you later, Flo. Bye-bye. Oh, oh, I'm still on camera? I'm Grace Charlin, and I've gone to City Life for about three years now. Actually, it was three years at the Fall Ladies Brunch this year. That's how I originally came to City Life. My roommate invited me, and I came, and I never looked back, and I've loved calling City Life home. I did worship all growing up at the church I grew up in in my hometown in Fredericksburg, and I really enjoyed it. And then in college, I just kind of stopped doing it, and then when I came to City Life, I was intimidated because it was totally different than anything I had grown up with. So at first I just wanted to learn. I knew I was like, oh, that's probably where I'll serve, but I feel like I need to learn more because I'm not quite ready. And then it was just easy to not get started. And it felt like I kind of like, oh, I missed the window. I think I've been here too long. I can't raise my hand now. Like, that'd be silly. My boyfriend, Adam, he'd gotten involved at RC and doing all these different things. And eventually he came to me and was like, um, you brought me to this church and I'm serving more than you. What are you doing? <laughs> I was like, yeah. What am I doing? Like, I brought you here, man. And so I reached out to Madeline and we sat down and we got coffee and she just started walking me through what serving with City Life's worship team would look like. And it definitely was still intimidating because it was different. They do more vocal parts than I was used to. And the style of music felt faster and more overwhelming than what I was used to. But they were so encouraging and kind of just kept walking me patiently through the process um, and encouraged me all the way through my first Saturday serving. And again, like just haven't gotten to look back since. And I've just been so grateful since getting involved. I found myself just listening to worship music even more in my um, everyday life. And it was really cool just to start seeing how that was then influencing my heart and mind everywhere I was going. And cool how seeing the practice for worship was also affecting my daily life and how even I was approaching others or what was on my mind. And then also just having the weekly practice of gathering with other people who not only love Jesus, but love music and are excited about it. I don't think I truly understood how much it takes to make a City Life Saturday run. When they say it takes a village, it really does here. It takes everyone figuring out where their strengths are, where their passions are, and being willing to help out. So no matter where you want to jump in, whether you love working with kids and babies, or you like doing tech and figuring out how to do the slides is your favorite thing, there's a space for you here at City Life. It unlocks a completely different experience because not only do you actually have skin in the game because you're actually helping out, with bringing this space together every week. But also like I met new people, people who I didn't cross paths with. I know we seem like a small church at first, but there are so many people making these things possible and you don't know till you're actually helping out beside them. And that's how you actually get to know them and grow with them both personally and spiritually and in your community. And I'm glad I didn't miss out on that. If you have any questions about our church, visit citylifeva.com or email us at info at citylifeva.com. Thanks for sharing your Saturday with us. Together, let's make Jesus easy to find. City Life, as we're standing all over the room, come on, that video is so good. It's so good, it's so encouraging. I love how, yes, come on. God is good. I love how it says, um, find, find your place to serve. And I felt like God saying, find your voice to sing. Come on, find your voice to sing. So we're gonna go into this next song. We're not gonna let the rocks cry out. We're gonna release our worship. I wanna hear every voice in this room. Come on, we have a story to tell, to tell and a song to sing. You've done for me. You stole my shit. 
shackles and set me free Broke me and gave me the victory I got a reason, a reason to praise Come on And I can't ignore what my eyes have seen What seemed impossible I believe Look at my life, we got history I got a reason, a reason to praise And I won't let her rock shackles and set me free broke me and gave me the victory i got a reason a reason to praise i can't forget what my eyes have seen what seemed impossible i believe look at my life we got history i got a reason a reason to praise
God as we were singing out, I just felt God saying, for all the people that might feel uncomfortable when we're singing, I will not keep quiet over and over again. I just think about people at football games or at concerts. It'll be a, you're, you're there all day. I mean, all even right, like, right, Derek? You were there all night long. And from start to finish, everybody was jumping, right? Come on. If we can do that at a football game or a concert, why can't we do it in the house of the Lord? Come on. We will not keep silent because God has given us a reason to praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've given us a reason to praise. We thank you, God, that you are our firm foundation. Lord, that you write every story in this room. And God, we just ask that even now, you would begin to tell us, Lord, the story that you're writing. Help us, God, to build our lives on you, on every word that comes from your mouth.
right now, let's submit our lives to him. Let's submit our lives to him and say, Lord, help me. Help me to build, God, in your kingdom. Use me, Lord. for you. 
are going to help me with this worship wrap up. If, if you're in the middle here, you got to decide which side of the church you're going to be on, okay? So this, this side over here is going to be the half two side. Say half two. Come on, that's not loud enough. All right, okay. This side over here is get to. All right, nice, nice. All right, all right. See, there's things in life where I had, where I, yes, the dentist. Nobody wakes up and says, ha I'm going to the dentist today. No, except the dentist maybe. And, and then again, it's just amazing. They, right, they put that thing in your mouth that holds your mouth open. You feel like you're constantly gagging. Then they want to have a conversation with you. It's bad. How about the DMV? No. Even though you're excited about the reason why you got to go there, because it might be that you got a new car, no, nobody's excited about going to the DMV. Paying bills. Right? We could just keep going. There's a whole list, but then there is the other list that's yeah, see, you guys are on it. There's get to, right? Thanksgiving dinner. Personal motorcycle trip to the mountains with friends. Yes, that's a get to. How about going to visit your child who's away at college? Right? If you've ever had the experience of dropping your child off at college, but then wanting to go, right, being able to go back and visit, right? It's a, it's a get-to moment. How, how about when your children are really little, like milestone birthdays, like when they turn one, right? Th those are, those are get-to moments. What, what if right now we said, you've got to go sit on the side of the church where going to church falls for you, right? What, what? What, what, if, what if we said, right now, if just being honest, if when you think about church, are you a, I have to go, or are you a, I get to go? And then once you sit where, you're, where you think you're supposed to, then we're going to go get your kids out of child care, and we're going to say, which side of the church do you think your parents are going to be sitting on based on the way they talk about church when you're at home and the pastor isn't there, all right? For, I'm, for me, church is a get-to. It's a get-to. And it was a get-to for me before I worked in the world of church. I, I had 10 years in corporate America. Could I just tell you, church was still the highlight of my weekend. I could not wait to be with God's family, to be in God's presence to be in the community of the people of God. And I'm just telling you, if, 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 you're, a, if you're a get to person, I would say at least, right? At least for you, you've got something in your life, no matter what the rest of your life is like, where you can say, you know what? That's a part of my week that I'm gonna celebrate. Even, even, even if everything around me, as the Bible says, is sinking sand, I've got a get-to moment that's waiting for me every seven days. And, and if you're a have-to, then come on, I would say at least you're coming. But, but don't stop there. Don't stop there. At some point, your have-to has got to be the get-to because Jesus calls his church the bride of Christ. And I don't know about you, but I think that's supposed to create a a feeling and a, and a picture and a sense for us of privilege and honor and excitement, enthusiasm that we get to be with her. So Father, I pray that whether it's people in our online community or people that are here in this room, may it be that we're all gonna get to a place where get to how we feel about these moments, how we feel about Saturday at five o'clock, that even tomorrow we're, we're looking forward to it in the days that lie ahead. May, may it be in us. Jesus, just as you said in the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. We hunger and thirst for so many things in this life. Desire is such a powerful emotion in all of us in this life. May it be that your church, your bride, our family, these moments would be a desire that would well up inside of us for the rest 
of our days. In Jesus' name, come on, and everybody said, amen, amen. You can be seated. Have to get to. You know, as we were worshiping and God was kind of building that wrap up in my, in my, in my heart, I was praying about what, I, what we were going to do when I came up here. I had this picture of when I was growing up in, in church, sometimes during the worship set, the worship leader would lead the church in a song that was in rounds. Does anybody know what that is? Yeah, they don't even, is that even a thing anymore? It is not. And so sometimes I tease Vanessa because I know it's not a thing anymore. And I say, one day, honey, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get up there. And she's like, no, no, you are not. You are not. If you don't know what rounds are, it's like this group here starts singing the song, right? And then they get to a certain point in the song, and then this middle section starts to sing. And then when they get to a point, then this section over here, right? Start. Now, I kid you not, we would do that in church. And that's why it used to be a have-to thing for so many people. But, yeah, I know, I know. Oh, it's so good. Memories, memories. We're in this series entitled Enter In because Jesus wants to use your life to spell Jesus to the world. He wants to use you, your life, your attitudes, your, your actions, your, your choices, your, your, your values, how you respond to situations and circumstances at your job and in your family and in your neighborhood. He wants to use your life to spell Jesus to the world. And so we've entitled this series Enter In because it's going to require you to enter into some practices that maybe you're not presently entering into. It it means that you might have to enter into this idea of letting go of some things that you're clutching that are getting in the way of the character of Christ forming in you. We've kind of found ourselves by divine providence, it wasn't the original plan of a kind of a mini series within this series where God's kind of had us parked on this idea of rest. I thought we were going to do it for one week and now we're in, in, in week three talking about this idea of rest, this idea of, of Sabbath. This, this, this week on, I woke up on, on Thursday morning and I went and uh, looked into the mirror and I frightened myself. Right, which is not a good thing when you look at yourself in the mirror. You, you know how football players wear the, the black right under their eyes? And, uh, and so when I looked in the mirror, I had that, except it wasn't black. I had these this deep red just marks, like somebody just beat on me. Right? Well, it doesn't, didn't look like that. When, when I went to bed, I was like, what in the world? And as the day went on, it, it got puffier, it got worse. I was having a, an allergic reaction to something. I still have no idea what it was. But about halfway through the day, Thursdays here at church is, we, is Jimmy John Thursdays, and uh, and so I get Jimmy John subs for 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 the staff. And and when Hannah was here as our preschool director, sometimes she would protest, and we would I would yield to Jersey Mike's, and uh, so yes, and so 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 I, I I was I was delivering the the subs, and Vanessa and Madeline were working on the paint, which again looks amazing. If you didn't come in that way, you got to go check it out. It looks so good. And I brought the subs, and Vanessa turned around, and she went, ow, what's wrong with your face? And I was like, not what you want to hear from your wife. And I was like, okay, I'm already a little self-conscious, right, about the way I look. I was like, honey, it has looked like this from the moment I woke up. You've looked at me a hundred times today. And she's like, I just, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. And then it was like she couldn't look at me, right? It was like, it was like she had a, she had, it was like I was Quasimodo from, from, you know, and so, so I said, I'm having some type of allergic reaction. I, I, don't, I don't have any idea what's going on. And so I don't know what the world did before Benadryl, but Benadryl seems to have taken care of it. And uh, I guess at some point we'll see if it, if it comes back. But, but it got me thinking about this idea of, I, I think the, the immaterial part of who we are has allergies. And I think that's a lot of what Jesus is trying to talk to us about, especially when it comes to rest. See, I, I think... Your soul, my soul, is allergic to, to hurriedness. I, I, in fact, I think it has an allergic reaction when you are so busy that you're overworking yourself. It's interesting, isn't it, that, that our physical bodies are designed by God to give us a warning, right? It's, it's saying something to us. It's saying, hey, something is, is wrong here. And, and I think the same thing is true with the immaterial part of who we are. There's, 
there's warning signs that kind of flare up, especially when we are living a hurried life. Now, I know a few weeks ago we did a participation moment. We're going to do it again. But a few weeks ago, my question was to you just when people are, are not getting rest the way that they should. And it might have been that your answer was talking about other people. But this time, as I come down in a minute and we go around, this time I want it to be, what's, what's your allergic reaction? What, what is it that is your tell that you are not getting the kind of rest that you need, right? So we're, I'm, I'm kind of forcing you into, I, I, we've given you a couple of weeks, but now that we want it to get personal. We, we want you to begin to engage in this conversation with God about rest and the kind of rest that you need. So what's, what's, what's yours? So, so I'll tell you mine. Mine is sadness. Yeah, I know. When, when I am overworked and not pacing myself and building in margins, the pattern in my life is that I just feel sad. To where Vanessa will say, are, are you okay? Is everything all right? And I'm like, yep, yeah, just tired. And, and then I know, right, when this feeling of pervasive sadness that I, I can't, it's just there's no reason for me to be sad. I know I, I need to slow down and, and, and take some time. What, so what's yours? What's your allergic reaction? What's your, what's your I'm not getting enough rest rash? Oh, it's good. It's just uh. Irritable. Yes. Somebody else. Lack of patience. Fall asleep on the couch. No, right. Like you're, you're not intending to fall asleep, and the next thing you know, you're out. Yep. Somebody else over here? Your rest rash? Scotty? You're, right, Chris was, I fall asleep on the couch. Scotty's was, my wife tells me I go, need to go take a nap. That's so great. You get put in sleep time out. Your eye twitches. I get that one too. Right here? A little bit of twitch. Yeah, that's a tell for me too. Somebody else? Hannah? You become more controlling. I like that you were honest enough about you put the word more in there. Yes. Yes. It's so great. See, I'm on honesty. We like honesty, Dean. Just w worry. Oh, that's good. You begin to worry. Betsy? Confusion. Hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come around that side. Anybody up here? Down here? Nobody? Nobody? What's that? <laughs> Vanessa said I eat. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. A panic breakdown, yeah. Emo just emotional, Be beyond the, what the circumstance would warrant, yes. Headaches, stress, yes, Cannon. You snap at your husband, <laughs> so good. This is her husband. That's great. Huh? Jennifer? Yeah, 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 despair, yeah. This feeling, you, 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 you want to feel hopeful, but you can't. Yeah. Even if you're in a situation where hope should come easy. Yeah, no, see, this is good. You can't sleep, yes. You get so tired, you're overtired, and then you can't sleep. And then you get irritated because you can't fall asleep when you need to sleep, right? It's just, it compounds itself. Yeah, yeah, see? So annoying. <laughs> Work it out, Brandy. Work it out. Ooh, Just Debbie's like, stay away from me. She's like, I need, a, I need a boundary around my life, and no one should enter in. Somebody else? Stan? Pain. pain. Physical pain. That's good. Yes. No. Wake up exhausted. Even though you slept, you still wake up tired. Yeah. Jamal? You do more work. You double down. You try to work your way out of... Then you, yeah, no. It's true, right? When you stop and think about how God has, in his divine wisdom, created these bodies, he's also created every other part of who we are. And so maybe even just thinking about it today, we should say, of course, he's going to build into us some mechanism, some way of our soul to say, hey, I need some help in here. I need some help. If you've got your Bible, you can turn to Matthew 20. I'm going to start reading in verse 17. I'm going to go all the way down to verse 28. I, I wasn't originally going to put this in to the message, but as I was writing about this text this week, I just felt the, the nudge of the Holy Spirit that this needs to be a part of the sermon. And so 
I'm going to pick up in verse 17, but I want to give a little bit of the background. It's a long parable. That's why I'm not going to read it. But if you've not read it before, it's there in the beginning of Matthew 20. It's, it's the story where Jesus says that a, 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 a business owner goes out and hires people to, to work for him for the day. They agree on a wage. And, and then towards the end of the day, he's passing back through town and he notices some people that are still waiting to get hired out. And so he says to them, hey, come work with me. And so they, they went and worked also. Now, they only worked for a little while. Everybody else has been working all day. And, and, and then at the end, at the, at the end, the, the, land, the business owner pays everybody the same amount of money. Now, this is not put in the Bible if you're an entrepreneur for how God wants you to manage your employees, right? That's not what this text is about. This text is, I believe, about this idea that, that whether or not you've been a follower of God your whole life or whether or not you yield to him in the final moment, everybody gets the same reward of heaven. I feel like that's what the text is supposed to be, and most biblical scholars agree. But, but still, you can appreciate how this created a little bit of, of discord, right, of controversy amongst the workers. Hey, this, this isn't fair, right? And so he, he tells he tells this parable, and, and, and then it jumps in in verse 17. It says, Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. He took the 12 disciples aside privately and told them what was going to happen. Listen, he said, we're going up to Jerusalem where the Son of Man will be betrayed to the leading priests and the teachers of religious law, and they will sentence him to die. And then they will hand him over to the Romans to be mocked, flogged with a whip, and crucified but on the third day, he will rise from the dead, right? Jesus near towards the end of his life. He's speaking plainly to his disciples. No, no, no longer, right, in mysterious language. He's laying it out plainly. And then verse 20, we see this word then again. Then the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus with her sons, and she knelt respectfully to ask a favor. What is your request, he asked. Jesus, or she replied, in in your kingdom, please let my two son, sons sit in places of honor next to you, one on your right and the other on your left. But Jesus answered by saying to them, you don't know what you're, you're asking. I, I like how it says to them, which means that it wasn't just the mother coming. You tracking with me? It's like James and John putting their mother up to asking this question. You don't know what you're asking. You're able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering that I'm about to drink. Oh, yes, they replied. We are able, and Jesus told them, you will indeed drink from this bitter cup. And he goes on to explain the suffering that they will endure, jumping down to 27. But whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and offer his life as a ransom for many. I, I love this text, right? Because even though it says that he met privately with the disciples and it's the mother that came to make the request, you realize as you're reading the stories, I pointed out that the two sons were there too, which means that, right? Which means that Jesus just told his closest friends that he's going to die, he's going to be betrayed, he's going to be tortured, and he's going to be crucified. And their response was, Jesus, that's terrible. Can we pray for you? Now, it was not their response. Their, their response was not to get everybody else around and say, hey, we, we, need, we need to make sure that we, we're, our friend is going through a difficult time here. What can we do to help? No, no, that's not what they did. They went and told their mother, this is our chance to make sure that of the 12 that we get picked to be the most important that inherit his kingdom. And the fact that he's going to die, I mean, he just told us, Mom, he's going to die any minute. We need to ask him right now, because if he dies before he picks us as his successors, then, then, then it's just going to be a lot of infighting, and we all know that he, we're his two favorite. You with me? Like, when you follow the reality of the story of this text, it is deeply troubling can you imagine if a friend came to you and shared with you that they were going through something like this, and then, and then your first response, your, your, the way you postured yourself was to take something from them, what kind of friend would you be? But yet, here they are. And, and these aren't new disciples of Christ. They've been with them for three years. And this was their response. I, I think this idea 
of a then that we see here in verse 20. Then the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus with her sons. This is the part when I was reading it. I felt the nudging of the Holy Spirit saying to me, this, this idea of inserting thens in your life is part of what this idea of Sabbath is all about. It's the, it's the, in, the, in the book of Psalms, it's the Selah. It's, it's the pause, the artistic pause that comes for a time of reflection. Sa- Sabbath creates a then moment in your week, every week, a vital pause to reflect on the seven days prior and the seven days ahead, but also to teach us how to make room for then moments in our every day. See, I think one of the reasons why Sabbath is so important is so that you get into this rhythm and this routine of stopping and pausing and reflecting and looking back on the week, as we talked about last week, looking ahead of the week that's to come. Because human nature, this idea of pausing before we act does not come natural to us, does it? Are you with me? We, we are reactionary by nature. Sabbath isn't just about rest, which we're going to get to in a minute. It's not just about our physical rest. It's about disciplining ourselves to insert a then into the moments of our lives so that we become less reactionary to the circumstances and situations that we're facing and more intentional in how we should be responding. It's a practice. It's a discipline. If James and John, the sons of Zebedee, and his, their mother would have had this rhythm of then in their life, I think maybe their reaction would have been a little bit a little different. I, I, I think that, that maybe if they had this rhythm of pause and stop and reflect, instead of choosing selfishness, they would have chosen other-mindedness. Think, think about all the times in your life where you've had a selfish response to a situation instead of instead of saying, what does this person need from me? And would a, a momentary pause, a, a moment of reflection, an offering of a prayer, how would that have led to a different outcome from you? I think for all of us, it would revolutionize our lives. It would change your marriage. It would change your parenting. It would change your relationship with people in your life that you've just, they're a trigger for you. This, this idea of putting a then moment in your life. Sabbath is also clearly about physical rest. It's about rejuvenation. The, the soul needs that pause, but also does this body. Karl Barth, famous theologian, says, let things take their course with particular freedom, distinct from weekday practice to as much or as little as the day brings. Here it comes, my favorite phrase, the day should be free from compulsion. How great is that? When is the last time that you had a day that was free from compulsion? It means that in that 24-hour cycle, there were, there, there were no have-tos, there were only get-tos. You understand the difference? That this idea of a Sabbath being free from compulsion means that, that you're not going to let anything be on that day that, where, you're, where you're driven to do it. Where it's a day free of, a free of compulsion. So then, let me just give you some steps here. If you're saying, Fred, I, I understand this idea of rest. I understand the importance of rest. But every time I try to stop, I try to share this list once every year at this church. And we've been doing it since we came here in 2007 just to give you an on-ramp to this, this rhythm of a weekly Sabbath. And the, and the first one is this, is to pray. Is, is that if, if, if your life is so upside down that there's no room for rest, then you got to start here. Because Jesus already knows what you need to do 
to overcome this pattern of hurriedness. He already knows. And he already knows the outcomes that, that you're going to face. He knows the challenges that you're going to face. I was re- in, in reading today in the Bible reading plan I'm doing this year. Is, it's called Beginning and uh, Bibleway, BibleGateway.com. And, and, and today I was laughing because it's the, 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 the part where Jesus meets with the disciples again. I think it was Matthew 25, 26. And, and he tells them everything that's going to happen. And, and, then, and then, the, then the jumps to the next verse. And the religious leaders are meeting in secret to, to, to scheme how they're going to kill Jesus. And, and I'm laughing because Jesus isn't in that meeting. And he's telling his disciples everything that they're planning even though he wasn't there. Right. Jesus doesn't need the future to happen to know what's waiting in the future. Are you with me? And, and so, so this idea of you praying about your Sabbath, he sees how you're going to struggle. He, he knows what's going to be a challenge to you. So if you're having a hard time with rhythm then, then of rest, then start here. And just begin to talk to him about what you need to do to get over this hump, to find this rhythm in your life. He wants to talk to you. He wants to explain it to you. He wants to show you how you're going to struggle. Invest is the next one. There, there should be money that you set aside in your budget to rest. There, there, because part of resting, especially if you have kids, is, is going and doing stuff. It's, it's activities. It doesn't have to be a lot of money. You're, you're, right, your standard of living is going to dictate how much you can set aside. But, but even if it's just a little something that's just going and getting a treat, just building some sense of fun into that day for your children. So for us, whenever we've put together a budget, especially the budget we put together every year, when our kids were young and at home, we had a part of our budget every year was how are we going to plan and pay for rest in our family? It was part of our rhythm. You got to be willing to protect it. When you begin to decide that you're going to set aside a day of rest, it will feel like all of hell has been unleashed against you. you. You with me? Because evil does not want you to find yourself in this rhythm because he understands that this rhythm is going to enable the character of Christ to form in you like it never has before. We say here all the time, the devil can't do anything about the truth of the gospel, but there's a whole lot that he can do for the credibility of the witness. So, so this idea of rest is, 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 is you saying, is I'm going to build this then in my day, in my week, and then all of a sudden the person you become changes. you got to be willing to protect this time. People are going to invite you to do things. The world is moving at a different pace. Are you with me? And we're, and we're never going to change that. But he didn't put us in charge of changing the pace of the world, he put us in charge of pacing the change of me, right? And so you, you, you've got to be willing to guard it and to protect it, and, and you've got to be willing to just swim upstream a little bit. You've got to be willing for the rhythm of your life to maybe just be a little bit out of step of people around you. And then I put protect and flexibility back to back because if you're not careful, protecting becomes legalism and then all of a sudden it becomes has the opposite effect on you. Are there going to be times where you can't? Yes. Are there going to be exceptions? Sure. Jesus talks about those at times in the Bible where the religious leaders of his day had lost sight of that, where Jesus would come into the synagogue and because it was a Sabbath, they would say, you can't heal. And Jesus is like, hey, that's crazy. And guess what? I created the Sabbath, so quit telling me what to do on it. Right? He's saying, if you're telling me that I can't even do good on Sabbath, then what is your, what is your Sabbath become? So you got to be flexible. Family, if you are married, have kids, right? Do not wake up tomorrow and you are gone and no one knows where you are and you left a note on the counter. Pastor Fred said that I need to have a day of rest. I'll be back at six. Because then your wife's going to call me and then I'm going to have to call you, right? So we just, let's just avoid it right now. No, no, no. You're, this is about being together. Will there be times within the Sabbath where maybe you need to 
disengage, yes, based on your personality, right? I'm an introvert. Vanessa is not. And so we have found that there's part, part of my unwinding is I, I need some alone time. And so you might have pockets, right, where you need to be by yourself, but your whole day can't be that at the expense of the relationship that's supposed to be building you and your family through resting together. Learn from others, People in this church that have been practicing this rhythm of rest for years, as is, is, is we talk about it, if, if, even if you don't know whether or not they have or not, then just begin to engage people. How are you doing it? What, what, what have you found that works for you? Got to be willing to give yourself some grace. And part of this idea of grace is, is, is that I w- at base camp, we were joking about this just last month, that your brain is the most ruthless drug dealer in the history of the world. Right? It's just dumping stuff into your bloodstream. right? And, and you get addicted to that. right? I, I get, we, we all, to, in some measure, right? that's what sexual addiction is, is all about. It's about your, you get used to your brain dumping certain kinds of chemicals into your bloodstream, and you begin to chase that. Right? The, same is, the same is true for hurriedness. That you, you get addicted to, to adrenaline. You, you get addicted to the energy of, of, of busyness, but you eventually will pay a price, just like every other addiction. And so if, if, if you really struggle with rest because you just, you're always up and on and, and going, then, then you're, right, you're going you're gonna to experience depression. And, and what you have to be careful about is that's not your indicator that God made you different from the rest of the world and that you don't need rest, it's your indication that you're a drug addict and you're addicted to adrenaline and you've got to let your body detox. You, you've, got to, you've got to let yourself discover a rhythm where you can enjoy the energy of activity, but then you enjoy the pace of restfulness too. And then the last one is this. Is the next day, do you feel rested? Just do you feel rested the next day? I'm a sedentary rester. Vanessa is an activity rester. She likes to do things. She likes to garden. She likes to decorate. And so this idea of rest doesn't necessarily mean you have to be sedentary unless that's part of how you need to rest. You can still be active. The question is, when you wake up the next day, do you feel rested and rejuvenated? And that's one of the ways that God built into your soul the ability to determine whether or not you're resting the way that you should. Somebody say attitude. What, what, if, what if you moved somewhere else? And because you were in this church, you, you, you have this love of church because church for you is a get to, not a have to. And when you land wherever you're going, one of the first things that I trust that you're going to do is we're going to find a church to be a part of as a family. And, 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 and what if when you went to visit that church, it began to come out that the pastor and the staff there, they worshiped other gods and actively participated in other religions? What, what, what if, what if the, and during that, that first visit, you found out that there was a life group that made idols, prayed to them, sold them to help raise money for the church? What, what, if, what, if, what if you found out that they spoke with profanity, especially using God and Jesus as curse words? What, what if you found out that they spoke disrespectfully to their parents and spoke of them publicly in derogatory ways, right? You've left this church already, am, right? Am I with you? Right? You've already said, I'm not sure this is the church for me. What if they openly endorsed, endorsed murder out of vengeance and anger as being appropriate? What if they practiced an open marriage relationship with their spouse? What if dishonesty for personal gain is just a natural part of life? What if they said giving false testimony was okay because most people are guilty of something? What if they said envying your neighbor's possessions is a great way to motivate yourself and to get more stuff? And if you're here today and you're thinking, finally, a church that I want to go to, I'd like to talk to you at the end of the service. I have failed you as a pastor. Somebody tell me where that list comes from. Mm -hmm. The Ten Commandments. When we read nine of them, nine of them, there is something inside of us that says, 
that's wrong. There's something inside of us that says that's not right. There's something inside of us. I would dare say people that aren't even Christ followers would say, I'm not sure you should call yourself a Christian and do, do those things. I mean, far be it for me to judge, but I think that goes against your belief system. This, this alone is one of the most powerful examples of cultural norms and cultural influences, is it not? Because it's not the nine commandments, it's the ten commandments. And one of them is to keep the Sabbath and to keep it holy. As a culture, we have talked ourselves out of the sacredness of Sabbath. And I think God made it one of the ten to guard it, to protect it, to make it impossible for us to explain it away. Look at this verse that's going to come up on the screen, and then I'm going to insert a Hebrew word in each one for effect that's underlined, and then I'm going to come back and give you the definition. This is Exodus 28 through 11. It says, remember to observe the Shabbat day by keeping it kadash. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Shabbat and a day of Nuach dedicated to the Lord our God. And on that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons, your daughters, your male or female, female servants, your, your, your livestock, any foreigners living among you, among you. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything in them. But on the seventh day, he, Nuach. And that is why the Lord blessed the Shabbat day and set it apart as Kadash. See, the name Sabbath that God gives it this, this day in the Hebrew language, Shabbat, in and of itself means to repose, to desist from exertion, to, to cease, to celebrate, to leave, to put away, to put down, to make to rest, to rid, to still, to take away. It's, it's in the meaning of the word itself speaks to the experience that we're supposed to have when we step into it. And then there's this word that translates holy in your Bible, which is this Hebrew word, kadash. It means to be clean. It means to appoint, to bid, to consecrate, to dedicate. It means hallowed. We, we recognize this word from the Lord's Prayer. Hallowed be thy name, right? And in, 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 in the Hebrew, this idea of kadash means that there is a sacredness to it to proclaim, to purify, and to sanctify. When, when, right? when, you, when you pull all of those words into each, all of this definition into each one of those words, this, this verse, right? it, 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 it affects us in a different way. This is one of my favorite words in the, in the Old Testament, nuach. It means to rest. It means to be at rest. It means to settle down. To settle down. And, and, and then to stay there, right? It's not just to settle down and then bounce back. It's, no, it's to settle down and, and to just stay in that place. It means to dwell in that place. It means comfortable, convenient, and easygoing. Just hearing those words does something to our soul, doesn't it? When is the, when is the last time that you had a day that was comfortable, convenient, and easygoing. Barring again from Karl Barth, a day that was free from compulsion. I'm going to invite the worship team to come back up. Josh, I'm just going to jump all the way to the end here, the John Ortberg slide. I was joking with Josh before the service because he's the projectionist today that, that uh, accidentally as he was doing these slides, he would just keep throwing up his slide about him being the... the, the uh, the service highlight, wouldn't that have been great? I don't know how I hit that button. It just, just showed up again, right? Oh. If you know Josh, you know that's impossible. That would never happen. Oh. If you've not read this book by John Ortberg, he's not, he's not a, a popular author today. He, he was back in the day, but, but his works are timeless. John, or you can see this one's got some age on it. The Life You've Always Wanted. I try to read this story every year in this church, every year. 
Some time ago, I was giving a bath to our three children. I had a custom of bathing them together more to save time than anything else. I knew that eventually I'd have to stop, right, the group bathing. But for the time being, it seemed efficient. Johnny was still in the tub, and Laura was out safely in her pajamas, and I was trying to get Mallory dried off. And Mallory was out of the water but was doing what has come to be known in our family as the d da day dance. This consists of her running around and around in circles, singing over and over and over again, dee da day, dee da day, dee da day. It's a relatively simple dance, expressing great joy. When, when she is too happy to hold it in any longer, when words are inadequate to give voice to her euphoria, she has to dance to release her joy. It's powerful, isn't it? So she does the dee da day. And on this particular occasion, I was irritated. I think that word came up. A rest rash. Mallory, hurry! I prodded, and so she did. She began running in circles faster and faster. <laughs> Enchanting Dida Day more rapidly. No, Mallory, that's not what I meant. Stop with the Dida Day stuff and get over here so I can dry you off. Hurry, hurry up. And then she asked a profound question. She looked at me and said, why? <laughs> I had no answer. I had nowhere to go, nothing to do. No meetings to attend, no sermons to write. I was just so used to hurrying, so preoccupied with my own little agenda. What a powerful confession this is. You feel it? So trapped in this rut of moving from one task to another, that here was life. Here was joy. Here was an invitation to the dance right in front of me, and I was missing it. And you get the feeling here, this isn't the first time. You with me? So I got up, and Mallory and I, we did, we did the D-Da-Day dance together. And she said, I was pretty good at it too for a man my age. <laughs> Stand with me. How many d -da day dances have you missed this week? How many, how many d -da day dances have you missed this year? How many d -da day dances have you missed in your lifetime? Let me ask this question. How, how many D -da day dances that you were supposed to start so that other people could join in, but the moment passed by. God wants to use your life to spell Jesus to the world. And as John Ortberg says in this book right here, that fatigue is one of the greatest enemies of the character of Christ that we will ever encounter in this life. So God, as we step into this moment of worship, as we wrap up this time together, Lord, help us to just downshift to, to a lower gear. Even if for some tomorrow isn't their Sabbath, I pray that in a way that only you can do by your spirit, just just give us a, a taste of what rest feels like. Just, just let our soul touch Nuak. Let, let, our, let our soul experience a supernatural injection of comfortable, convenient, and easygoing. Maybe we're able to breathe just a little bit deeper. Maybe our heart rate slows down just a little bit more. Maybe the, the stress that we carried in here just begins to fall away. Just, just give us a taste. Give us a glimpse of the Shabbat, of the then that you want to call us into. In Jesus' name, let's worship together.
just say i've got to i've got to race out of here at the end of the service so if you have a question or if you had something you need prayer for vanessa's here people down at the front i'm taking care of my mom this weekend uh living with her she lives with my sister in new Kent, who's out of town and my my mom has severe dementia so there's there's someone sitting with her but i've, I've got to go relieve her and uh so i'm, I'm gonna race out but but i was thinking about the worship wrap i was i was sitting with my mom last night and 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 part of the consequence of her de dementia is that she has zero short-term memory so every 15 seconds the world restarts for her right it's a it's a scary place to live and it, which means sometimes she just gets stuck on something that she's obsessing over and so the, the only way to get her out of that is to distract her by trying to get her to pay attention to something else so last night we were watching the Dodgers and the Padres play and and she kept she got locked into this question like where where was she calls it a pocketbook which I, Vanessa's still working that out of me it's a purse but I still call it a pocketbook because I grew up in Verona she's like stop calling it that but she she just every 15 seconds where where is my pocketbook where's my pocketbook so I had to ask her a question I said what do you what do you think about this baseball game you know and then all of a sudden she starts looking at the baseball game and she, she said I, those pitchers they just throw it too low like she's calling balls and strikes I'm like my 84 year old mother is all of a sudden this closet baseball fan that I didn't even know about. It was great. It was great. And, and I was thinking about that in the, as, as I was praying for this moment because for some of you, you're, 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 you're stuck in a rut of just busyness and hurriedness. And, and God, wants, God is going to come in for you this week. He's going to interrupt your life however you need him to. You with me? He's going to get your attention. And in that moment, just, just yield to him. And, and let him show you whatever it is that you need to see. Father, I pray for the people that are in this room, for the people that are on part of our online community, that they're just living a nine commandment Christianity. I pray that for the rest of 2024 and going into 2025, that they're gonna be 10 commandment people for all the reasons that we've talked about it in this series. 
for all the reasons you created it to begin with, for the gift that you wanted it to be to us, that we would embrace it, not, not because we have to, but because we get to. In Jesus' name, and everybody said together, amen. We'll see you next week. Thanks again for joining us for Church Online. If you need prayer or have a question about the church, a question about what you just heard, or how to grow in your faith, our hosts are here for you. If you're on our church online platform, you can also click prayer or the contact button at the top of your screen. We'd love to follow up with you. But in the meantime, we hope you'll make plans to join us again next weekend right here at citylifeva.com slash livestream.